Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to elaborate on our last video where we integrated Abuse IPDB with Wazoo. And in this video, I want to take that a step further by actually building some active response based upon what Abuse IPDB responded with. So the flow of how this is going to work is we're first going to detect when a user has successfully logged into our box from a non-private IP address. So in the last video, we touched on detecting when a user has unsuccessfully logged in but now we're going to take this a step further and detect when a user has successfully logged in from a non-private ip address we're then going to ask abuse ipdb if the ip is malicious and we're going to piggyback off of our abuse ipdb integration script that we created in the last video so if you haven't checked out that video yet I will link to it in the top right and in the description below. So make sure you check that out before moving on to this one. So you're all caught up with some of our integration scripts already. And then we are going to detect if an IP is malicious. So if abuse IPDB responds back with a confidence score of an IP being malicious, we're then going to trigger a bash script via active response. It's going to create an IP tables rule for that IP address that successfully logged into the box which would ultimately lock the user out from being able to interact with the server at all so the steps to do this we're going to create a rule to detect public ips successfully logging in we're then going to trigger the integration when a non-private ip triggers the alert and that alert being the successful login we're then going to create a bash script to add ip that abuse IPD returns back to us to an IP tables drop rule if on and only if it is malicious we don't want to we don't want to add an IP tables drop rule for IPs that are not malicious you know those may actually be your legitimate end users uh, and then we're going to add the script to active response so the active response when it triggers knows what script to call so let's go ahead and jump into it and all right, so I'm going to jump onto my Wazoo Manager. I'm going to go into Management. I'm going to go into Rules, then our Manage Rules Files, and our Custom Rules to edit our Custom Rules file. So in the previous video, we created this rule where we took advantage of uh, Perl Compatibility's regex matching to match on non-private IP addresses, meaning that is a public IP address from a external network uh, usually being of course the the internet and this was a trialed rule of our signature id 5716 which was authentication fails where for this demo we actually want to do this for authentication successes so i'm just going to actually just copy this block we can take advantage of this pre-existing block and we go into more details on this in our last video so again if you haven't seen that uh go ahead and check that out before progressing to this one i'm first going to increment my rule id number to a hundred thousand and three and then here i'm going to change my if signature id instead of 5716 i want to put this on the rule that will trigger for authentication successes so if i go into kibana so if i go into our security events we see an authentication success is rule id 5715 so we want our rule that we're creating to trigger only on authentication successes and that is going to be 5715 so wazoo is going to see that the rule id 5715 has triggered and then it is going to trigger this rule and say okay do we have a match of a non private ip address and if you do then we're going to trigger this alert and for this alert i will say authentication success from a public ip address and we're going to list the source ip so let's first save this guy and restart and then make sure that this rule is triggering and functioning uh correctly so now let me go ahead and just duplicate a successful login here. So this will trigger an authentication success. And then we should see an authentication. And then we should see our newly generated a, a rule be triggered. And sure enough, here we go. Authentication success from public IP address. And then it lists my public IP address. So good. So that portion is working. Now let's configure our Wazoo manager to when this rule ID triggers, 
I want it to run the abuse IPDB integration that we created in the previous video. So I'm going to go back into management. I'm going to go in configuration and I'm just going to edit the config from the web UI of the end. Uh, if you're on the server from the command line itself, this would just be in the osec.conf file of your Wazoo manager. And here we see, and here we see my block here. So this is the block we created in the previous video. And here you can see that it's tied to rule ID 100,001, where now we want to trigger this integration script when rule ID 100,003 is actually triggered. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this guy down below and replace the one with a three here and then of course you need to replace with your own uh, api key that you get when you register with abuse ipdb so you'll replace that value there all right and then once you save that you will save and then restart your wazoo manager and then if we tell our integrations.log we should see that now when so now if we tail our var osec log and migrations log, let me expand this a little bit. Now, when we do a successful login again, we should see our integration scripts kick off as well. So I'll go ahead and just duplicate a successful login here and continue. And then we should see a log entry made. And sure enough, there we go. So we see the Wazoo manager reach out to abuse IPDB via the integration. So that is looking good. Now let's create our active response script. And this is going to be, this is, is a bash script that we're going to place on all of our Wazoo agents who we want to uh, allow to run this script. So first, so I'm on my Wazoo agent here. And I'm going to go Navar OSEC active response and then bin this bin directory here and if we list out these you see some of the default uh active response scripts that come pre-built with wazoo whenever you install wazoo but we are going to create our own so i'm gonna use a text editor to create a new file and i'm just gonna call this abuse ipdb dash firewall dot uh dot sh you can of course call this file whatever you want but do remember when we reference this file in the osec.conf which we'll do here in a sec you need to use the correct uh name of the script itself so you use a text editor to open up the script and then i've created uh just a simple bash script within GitHub that I'll link to in the description below that you guys can copy that just takes abuse, abuse IPDB's response and strips out the source IP associated with the alert. So we're using JQ. Um, one thing to note on your agents, they need to have JQ installed. So just like a yum install JQ or an app git install JQ, whatever your package manager is make sure you install jq or you will have some issues and jq is needed for allowing the script to parse through the different fields of the json that is returned back from the manager i, I cover this in a lot more detail in the active response uh 2.0 video which i'll link to in the description below if you guys want to learn a little bit of how active response is now working in what the wazoo 4.2 release uh, you can learn more a little bit there but i'll go ahead and copy this guy and paste it here so uh just briefly walking through it real quick we are assigning so we're first stripping out the source ip address that abuse ipdb has returned back to us saying it is malicious and we're assigning that to the variable source ip we are then using ip tables to create an ip tables drop rule and our ip address that we're using to create this rule against will be our source ip variable so that now the malicious ip address that actually triggered the alert and abuse ipdb is saying is to be malicious that ip address will be stripped out and then our ip tables rule will be created for it and then we're going to echo out to our active response uh, dot log file saying hey the source ip has been added to the blacklist so i'll go ahead and save this off and then if we list this guy out we need to change the ownership and modify the file so i'll say root osec ch mod 750 not ch own <laughs> um okay there we go 
So you only do you only need to set it to the correct owner, which will be uh, the owner of root and then the group of OSEC, and then modify it to 750 so it has uh, execution permissions. So that all looks good. And now let's go ahead and I don't think you do have to restart the agent, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna say system CTL restart was your agent. And now let's go back onto our Wazoo manager to tell it when we want it to trigger the script on the agent. So back on the manager here, I'm gonna go into edit configuration and, and I'm gonna scroll down to my active response blocks uh, here. I'm gonna just copy and paste one of our pre-existing integrations. So I'll copy the command block and also the active response block. And then we'll need to make some changes here. So uh, for the name, I'll just call it abuse IPDB firewall. Erase that and I'll just call it abuse IPD firewall. And then here, this name can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the name of the, uh, of the script itself if you don't want to, but now we're pointing to an executable and this has to refer to the script itself. So I'm gonna say abuse IPDB uh, dash firewall dot sh, which was the name of our script. Uh, again, another thing to note, make sure that this script is put in the var osec active response uh, slash bin directory on your agents that you want to be able to run the script. So that looks good. Timeout allowed, I'll set to no. So that meaning that the Wazoo manager will never tell the agent, hey, delete this IP address from your IP tables drop rule. Uh, you can you can allow for timeouts to so say you want to block an IP address for 30 seconds and then unblock it. That's what this feature would do here. Uh, disable. So then we get to our active response block. Disable to have set to no. And then rule ID. So when do we want this alert to trigger? Well, if we go back to our rules here and our custom rules to be specific and this will be the one we created actually in the last video that we touched on so you see that our rule id 100002 is triggered when abuse ipdb says hey this confident that we have a we have a confidence score of not zero of this IP address that you queried, queried our API for. So this rule will trigger when abuse IPDB says, yep, that IP address is malicious, is malicious. So this is when we want our active response rule to trigger is when abuse IPDB confirms that the IP address is malicious. So I'm gonna copy that rule ID and go back into my config here and just paste that in there. And then our command, we're going to reference the command name from above. So I'm gonna remove that and paste that there. And then location of local, and this will just be the, this will just refer to the agent that actually triggered the alert. So in our case, that'll be our agent here that we're looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and then restart our manager. And then we should be able to test this workflow and we should see an IP tables drop be added to uh, be added to our server here. So if I list our IP tables now, we probably we shouldn't have anything. Yeah, so we don't have any IP tables rules added. If I look at our var log secure file, let's wait for a sec and see if we have, because this guy is exposed to the internet with an open SSH port. So let's see if we get some people attempting to log in and kind of weird over the last few days i haven't really noticed people notice scripts or bots or uh scans themselves actually trying to log oh actually here we have one from it from pi so okay there was one uh but let's instead of waiting i'm gonna just go ahead and generate one myself uh with a no malicious ip let me see if i have this i do not Oh, and I'm going to append that to our var log secure file. All right, and now let's actually change this IP address to one that will be malicious and that we know abuse IPDB will report on. So let me go back into, let me search for like no malicious IP addresses on GitHub and I'm gonna grab this value here this is the same ip address we used in the last video so i know that abuse ipd will report on this 
Um, so, okay, so I will paste that there. Enter, and now we should see if we tail our var osec logs, active response.log. Uh, sure enough, we just see come in. So we see our active response script has just been ran for source IP address, and the IP address that we just added to this log file has been added to the blacklist. And if I do an IP tables uh, dash VNL now, we should see an IP tables drop rule created for that. And sure enough, here we go. So say now a malicious actor has been able to compromise user credentials, right? So say the root credentials, for example, and they were able to successfully log into the box. We then ask abuse IPDB, hey, is this IP address malicious? Abuse IPDB says yes. And now we've created a drop rule to where now the server is not, is not allowing any network traffic from this particular IP address. So the user has now been locked out of the server and our IP tables rule has just been created. And then if we go into our security events, we see our flow kind of take, we see our flow take place. So we first see our authentication set success from a public IP address. And here's our IP address. We then call out to abuse IPDB. Abuse IPDB responds and says, hey, I see this IP with 100% confidence of being malicious of abuse connected to your network. And then we say, okay, let's take that. And now let's run our active response script. And sure enough, we have now added, we have now ran our active response script that adds this IP to an IP tables drop rule. So now any traffic from that IP address is going to be blocked from our server. So let's demonstrate with another no malicious IP. I'll copy this guy. I'll copy this value here and let's see. Let's see this flow take place one more time. So let me go back to my echo and I'm going to remove, remove our previous and input that in. If I tail our active response.log, we see that it already came through. So now Wazoo has added this IP address to our blacklist. If we do IP tables dash VNL, now we see both the IP addresses added as drops to our IP tables rules. And then since this was an authentication success, we know these credentials are compromised, right? So now we need to immediately change these credentials that the user was able to actually comp that the malicious actor was actually able to compromise. And if we look at the authentication success that took place, we see that the user that they used was root. So in this example, we would say, holy crap, our root credentials are compromised. We need to change those, uh, you know, immediately. But we are at least protecting ourselves and giving us time to respond by actually blocking traffic from this IP address, the the actual attacker, you know, you know, nothing is stopping them from jumping to another box with a different with a different public IP address that may not be known to abuse IPDB and, you know, running the same chain of chain of attack and still getting access to your system. But this at least buys your def buys your security team time now because now we're immediately dropping traffic where they originally came from and now we hopefully will have enough time to change the credentials that were compromised before the attacker can actually leverage an IP address that, that may be unknown to abuse IPDB. So I think that wraps it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.